All right, everybody, it's Mr. Zabo. I am back. And our next idea with functions is function notation. And it looks a little bit funky, but it's actually really powerful. It's something that we're going to use quite a bit. Now, this, if I am to read this, says f of x equals x plus 2. So it is not f times x, it's not fx, it's f of x when it's written this way. Okay. And f is not a variable. Let me repeat that. f is not a variable. It is the name of your function. We are going to have different names for functions because different functions can happen simultaneously. Okay. So other letters like h could be in there and this would be h of x, g would be g of x, k would be k of x, and so on. x is your input value. So we just talked a lot recently about input versus output. In this case, the x is your input, and that's the same x here and here. You're going to input x, your output is going to be what you get when you add 2 to it. Okay. So, for example, let's say we want to input 3 into a function that we're calling f. This is what it's going to look like. Since I am inputting 3, that's a way of saying my x is 3. I'm going to put it here, and instead of this being f of x, I say f of 3. So it's saying use function f and input 3. Because I'm inputting 3, I have to put it everywhere x was. It was f of x was equal to x plus 2. So f of 3 is equal to 3 plus 2. My answer then becomes f of 3 equals 5. I input 3, I out, my output is 5. Input 3, output is 5. x is 3, y is 5, something like that. f of x is a different way of writing y. It's using function notation, and we'll talk a lot throughout the rest of the year about why it might be called that or used this way. Let's do one more example. If I want to input 7 into that function, what's that going to look like? Well, 7 is my new x value. That's my input not 3 anymore, it's 7. So I want f of 7. I'm inputting 7 where x was, so I input that here. 7 plus 2 is 9, so I could say that when I input 7 into function f, my output is 9. I could write that this way, input equals 3, output equals 5, so input equals 7, output equals 9. We can write that as an ordered pair, or in parentheses as a coordinate, input 7, output 9. Okay, so trying to tie all these things that we've talked about so far today together. Here's some examples of where it can get complex. I have the function g of x as an input, and that's equal to x plus 1. Evaluate the following. Okay, I'll do the first one with you. I'm using g, which is, negative, which is x plus 1, and I'm inputting negative 5. So instead of x, I'm going to replace x with negative 5. And then get my answer. I want my answer written this way. g of negative 5 equals, negative 5 plus 1 is, negative 4. That's how we should write our solutions. Go ahead, press pause, try g of 10. And then try number two, where I have a new function. Unpause when you're done. So here's the answer for g of 10. I haven't put the answers for number two yet. I just put what my substitution is going to look like. Did you do all of this? Did you put parentheses around your input values? If not, double check your answers. Pause and double check. order of operations then I input 4 into the parentheses 16 minus 3 is 13 and here's where it's super important you include parentheses if I were you over here I would put some note in this column here that you must remember that if you have an exponent here you have to put your negatives in parentheses if you do not you would have got negative 4 
minus 3 is negative 7, and that's not correct. Now you have an input value that's mapping to the wrong output value. So be super duper careful. Now, the first example where it matters that we have different names is we could have two different functions in the same problem. So here I have function h and function p, and they're different functions. They both have the same input. h has the input x, and I'm taking 3 times x and adding 1. p has an input of x, but I'm only taking half of x. So what you have to do is look at what function we use and what's the input value. So here, I want to use function p and input 12. I have to choose the correct function. I can't use this function. Okay. So I have to take p of 12. That's going to equal 1 half times x. x was 12. I put that into the function p. p of 12 is 6. If I put 12 into here, I would have gotten 37, but that's not the same thing. That's a different function. So for h of negative 2, that is the function I want to use. I want to use function h and input negative 2. So h of negative 2 is going to be equal to 3 times x plus 1. x is my negative 2. Follow the order of operations negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. The function h, when my input value is negative 2, results in an output of negative 5. So we've got some practice for you, and your homework tonight is going to be a worksheet.